He is president of the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land, and he joins us tonight to discuss the challenges of maintaining the Christian presence in the land of Christ's birth and ministering to them in the midst of war. Please welcome Father Peter Vasco. He joins us from our D.C. studio. Father Peter, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to get to your thoughts on what we're seeing with this Hamas incursion into Israel, the unspeakable violence that has ensued. The Pope, the Latin Patriarch, other church leaders in the Holy Land have called for calm in the wake of this October 7th surprise by Hamas. What are you hearing from your people on the ground? Well, before I even, I'd like to say a few words before that. You know, I've been in the Holy Land for the last 36 years, and I came in like in 1986. And during that time frame, there's been a cycle of violence that continues on. It started in uh, 75 years ago when the state of Israel was declared a, 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 by the United Nations a country. Uh, the problem is, is that, you know, there's, there's, no, there's always a, a problem of, of constant, constant conflict between the two people, the Israelis and the Palestinian Muslims. And this goes on and on and on. I think part of, part of the problem is that both sides, uh, the Israelis and the uh, Palestinian Muslims, look upon each other uh, as, and distrust, e distrust each other uh, and, and really sometimes hate each other, that they have passed on this, this uh, hatred and mistrust to their children's children, and it's become embedded in the psychological DNA of both sides. And I say there will never be peace in that land, and that's a very sad thing to say. So dealing with, uh, with that in mind, dealing with our Christians, I was speaking with the customers of the Holy Land uh, this morning, and he said that everything is closed. Nobody's walking out in the streets. They've been actually as the government has sequestered the religious to stay in their convents and churches, and the streets of Jerusalem are filled with uh, Israeli police. So it's another, like COVID, where nobody can move around. It's a very sad situation. And you have to understand that wow. even the, the Palestinian Christians, because they're Arabs and they're Palestinians, if they go walking out, maybe they'll be arrested. Uh, needless to say, the, the Palestinian Muslims are, are very, very uh, afraid uh, to, to move out of, the, out of their houses and walk around. So it's, a, it's like a ghost town in Jerusalem right now. They have also closed wow. off uh, villages like Ein Karim, Bethanina, Jericho, uh, Ramle uh, to the public. Uh, so it's, it's a very sad situation. And so, you know, all we do is we're asking, he's asking prayers for, for the people in the Holy Land, especially uh, for, for the Jews and for the, and for the Muslims, uh, for peace to, to uh, somehow reckon, be reconciled. And this needs, uh, I think, an international uh, uh, world involvement to speak to both sides. What's going to happen? I have no, I have no idea for the future, and it's very, very sad, uh, Raymond. Now, look, Father, I, I, you know, I've said it before. You can dispute the land and have that conversation. That should be had diplomatically. You don't do that with a sword or by grabbing and killing civilians. I mean, this is this is just this set back. This sets back the Palestinian cause. Oh I my think. gosh! You all know, all it, the peace no accords. What they yeah. thought they were doing. Yeah. Oh, it's what sixteen peace accords, starting with uh, the Oslo with the Madrid. And nothing right. ever happened because either one side or the other never followed through for the future negotiations. And there's, your, there's yeah. our problem right there, in a nutshell. Well, so, so for the moment, the holy sites are basically locked off. I mean, I, I just had a friend of mine who was uh, on, in pilgrimage. He was stuck there for days in the Holy Land with a group of, of uh, this is a priest, with a group of pilgrims. They just got out and got to Dubai today. Exactly. But uh, they couldn't go anywhere. They could go across the street, I think, and go to one shrine. Everything else was closed to them. Well, what we've been doing for the, for the, for the, for the uh, pilgrims, uh, and also for the migrant workers, we've been uh, putting them in, uh, in Nazareth and in Jerusalem up in our Casanovas free of charge because you know, they had nowhere to go to and they didn't know where to go and they, they weren't going to pay additional price, additional uh, c c purchases of, of their rooms. So we have offered for those people, our Christians and migrant workers, uh, a free, a free uh, accommodation in our Casanovas. And that's the only thing we can basically do. As far as our Christians, uh, you know, there's no really, well, it's excommunication, but there's nothing that at this point in time that we can 
bring to them or do anything. But uh, I mm. know in, in Gaza, you must have heard that uh, the, the, the 1,200 Christians, uh, a lot of them have gone, the Romans have been destroyed, and they've been in the Latin Patriarch churches in Gaza uh, to help mm. the people themselves. So it, it's a very, very, very volatile, very, very sad situation altogether. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and let's speak to that for a moment. When people hear about Christians in the Holy Land and the diminishing populations, where are they predominantly, Father? You deal and your foundation deals with these Palestinian Christians every day. Where are they? Where do they live? Well, basically, they, they, they come from Bethlehem. Uh, and about five, five, six years ago, 500 uh, families were leaving each year, okay? Now, that has gone down to about uh, it's slowed down to only about 200. So there's been a, a slight uh, decrease in, in that, which is, uh, which is you know, uh, better, not, not good, but at least they're, 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 they're finding hope in the future. But most of the problems where the, where the, uh, where the uh, decrease of Christians are coming from are from the, the village of Bethlehem, for the most part. And some from Jerusalem. The Latin Patriarchate has issued a statement, Father. I want you to react to this. It says, unilateral decisions surrounding the status of religious sites and places of worship rattle religious sentiment and fuel even more hatred and extremism. It is therefore important to preserve the status quo of all the holy places in the Holy Land and in Jerusalem in particular. Here's my question. Can you explain to the audience what's meant here by the status quo? And do you fear that relationships between these various communities could be irreparably harmed as a result of the violence we're seeing? Well, the status quo is basically uh, when we, when St. Francis came here, came here in 1218 uh, and, and, and established the, the Franciscan order as such. And it was something that of each of, of course, it was under the Muslim uh, Ottoman Empire, the, Mos the earlier uh, Muslim governments. Uh, and they, some of them, recognized our 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 churches, recognized protection. Others, other sultans, uh, killed killed us, uh, and we continued on with that. But the the status quo of 1852 is where, especially in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where the Ottomans, because of uh, monetary, uh, I would say, contributions. Uh, we were, mm -hmm. the Greeks and the Armenians and the Latins were allowed to stay uh, based on how much money we gave the Ottoman Empire. And that status quo is very important. It's, it, it serves as a protection uh, for the Christian sites. Now, as you know, in the last year and a half, uh, we've had a very far-right government, uh, Israeli government, and what's happening, we've had many uh, of our sanctuaries been, uh, have been uh, not destroyed, but have been coming in. Uh, there was one in the flagellation uh, where our Lord was 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 scourged, and they broke the statue of Christ. And luckily, one of our one of our say, uh, one of our security men, uh, you know, apprehended the culprit. Uh, he was arrested. Uh, police took him took him in, and we wanted to press charges. And they said to us the next day, "Oh well." He was mentally ill, so we put him on a plane back to the United States. Now, this has happened in several other occasions in different, in different uh, uh, churches, and they get the same response. Oh, this person was, you know, a sort of uh, mentally ill, so we had to leave him. I'm saying if I, for example, was, was visiting there as a Christian, as a Catholic, and I went to a synagogue and I tried to destroy something that is of a holy to, to the Jewish faith, I'd be put in jail. I wouldn't be saying, oh, something's wrong with me and uh, I have to go back to the United States. I'd be put in jail. It just seems that this thing is continuing going on. And also the problem of spitting. Uh, at the at the at the priests at the bishops that mm -hmm. is still going on now. Uh, so it, we I have a thought that with this far right government, maybe they're giving people the maybe settlers are giving that I don't know an opportunity to say oh, you know you can be legitimate. I, I have no idea, but it's very very scary for everyone, especially the Christians in the Holy Land, especially you know bishops being spit upon, uh, religious being spit upon. Not every every day. But it's very frequent and it's very, very scary. And we're saying, who's, who's, who's in charge of this? Uh, so that's another yeah. problem. So that's all part of keeping the status quo, of keeping, making sure that we're protected, et cetera. 
Uh, so how before I let you go, Father, how is your Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land serving both the, the visitors as well as the Palestinian Christians and the Christians in the Holy Land? W what can you do in the midst of this violence when everything's locked down? You really can't do anything. I was talking to the cousins. What what are we actually doing uh, for the Christians? And the only thing he said at this point in time, as I said early in the, in the program, that uh, they're giving, they're opening up our Casanovas to uh, beleaguered travelers, to uh, migrant refuges, Jesus, et cetera. That's all we can do. I mean, uh, they're afraid to go out into the street, uh, into into the into the town, and so right now everything is like paralyzed, and it's very sad. So there's mm -hmm. nothing, anything active we can do because we're not supposed to be going outside anywhere. Father Peter Vasco, thank you for coming on. Thanks for your insight, which is uh, unique and original. And uh, the work of the Franciscan Foundation of the Holy Land, if you're interested in learning more, you can go to ffhl.org. Father Peter, thank you for being here. Raymond, thank you so much for your, for your help.